Hello and wel welcome to video 4 for week 4. At the end of the previous video, we row reduced and ended up with a matrix that didn't have an immediate way to interpret it as a solution. In this video, I want to talk about a process of description by parameters of dealing with those matrices that we get out of the row reduction algorithm. Let me give you the general theory of what's going on here. When I have a system of linear equations, I have three possibilities. Sometimes there is no solution, no possibility. Sometimes there's exactly one solution. Those are the matrices we knew how to interpret. But sometimes there are infinitely many solutions. And if there are infinitely many solutions, they form an affine subspace. And those are the ones we really want to talk about because those are the, the situations where we come up with these strange matrices and we have to interpret them. What we're actually doing is actually building this affine subspace. And that's called the solution space of the linear system. An affine subspace is given by a linear subspace, a span, plus an offset vector. And a linear subspace has all linear combinations of some spanning set, some basis. So some number a, some number a1, a2, some number up to ak, wherever, whatever k is the dimension of this affine space. These numbers are free parameters. They can be anything at all. You can have any multiple of the first vector plus any multiple of the second vector, so forth and so on. So the number of free parameters is in fact the dimension of this affine space. So in interpreting matrices, what we want to get at is what's the number of free parameters, and hence calling this video description by parameters. So let's go back to row reducing. We solve a system by row reduction. This is how we go through the process of figuring out what the solution space should be. If there's a row that translates into zero equals one, that's impossible, of course, that means there are no solutions. This is how we identify systems with no solutions. There'll be places in a matrix where if you translate back, you get zero equals one and you have no solution. Otherwise, if all rows have leading ones, then there's a unique solution because then each row will have a leading one corresponding to its variable and it will tell you what the variable is, what value the variable should take. Otherwise, we get infinitely many solutions and each column that corresponds to a variable that's without the constant column, but each column to the left of the dividing line, to the left of the equal sign, without a leading one becomes a free parameter. And then we'll use that variable as one of the parameters of the system. For the rest of this video, I want to walk through examples that show us how to interpret matrices and how to do this. So a bunch of examples of interpreting and writing things in terms of description by parameter. So here's a matrix. This matrix is perfectly fine. It has a unique solution. There's an extra row of zeros, but nothing to bother us there because we have x is equal to negative three, y is equal to negative two, z is equal to eight. All of those things we can read off from those rows there and we can ignore the zero equals zero. This, this last thing just translates into zero equals zero. It's a true statement, but it doesn't add anything to the system. Here's a similar system. I've got columns now for w, x, y, and z in R4. This is a system in four variables. This tells me that w is equal to negative three, x is equal to negative two, and y is equal to eight. So it tells me the value of those things, but there's no restriction on z. Anytime z would show up, it's multiplied by zero. So z is a free variable, and the z column has no leading one. That's how we know that z is a free variable. So the solutions here, w, x, and y are fixed, but Z can be anything. So whatever the system was, Z was completely free in that system. You could actually set Z to be anything at all in that system. So this means there are infinitely many solutions. And since there's one column without a leading one, there's one free parameter, we actually know the dimension of this solution space is in fact one. The number of free parameters is the dimension of the solution space. Here's a similar example. I still have columns for w, x, y, and z from R4. I have leading ones in these three columns. No leading one here, but this is still in reduced row echelon form because every row, the first entry is leading one, and every leading one is in a column of zeros. The fact that the z column doesn't have a leading one tells us that z is a free parameter. There's one free parameter. The solution space has to mention one. But now I'd like to give a description of that solution space. 
So let me translate these three rows into equations again. So if I have a free variable, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unencode the matrix. I'm going to translate the matrix back to an equation. So this says 1 times w plus 2 times z equals negative 3. And if I solve for w, that means that w is negative 2z minus 3. In this way, I'm going to express everything in terms of the free variable. I can do the same thing for these two. If I do the same thing, I get these three equations. w is negative 2z plus 3, x is z minus 2, y is z plus 8. And again, all I'm doing there is I'm retranslating the rows into equations and putting the free variable on the other side of the equation with the constant. I can add to this the trivial equation z equals z. And then I'm going to translate this into the way I describe an affine space with an offset vector and a span of some number of things. Here I have one free variable, so I just have the span of one thing. So this could be the free variable times some vector. Where do these numbers come from? Well, this is just the constant. So negative 3 goes there, negative 2 goes there, positive 8 goes there. And in the z equation, there's no constant, so I have a 0 there. So that's the offset. The offsets are those constants. And then this tells me z times what? Well, z times negative 2. So negative 2 there, z times 1, z times 1, and z times 1. So that what I have here, I'll erase this to try and make it a bit more clear again, is I have w is negative 3 minus 2z, x is negative 2 plus z, y is 8 plus z, and z is equal to z. And this is what we call a description by parameters. This very explicitly makes it an offset span, an affine space, an offset vector, and the span of negative 2, 1, 1, 1, multiplying that by some free variable. Let's do another example now. Here's an example. In reduced row echelon form, there's a leading 1, there's a leading 1. Each leading 1 has zeros above and below it. This is an R4, so W, sorry x, y, z, and constants. Here, y and z are both free variables, because they both have columns without leading ones. So here I expect a two-dimensional offset span, two-dimensional affine subspace as the solution. I will again translate the equation. So this equation says that 1 times w, 0 x's, 3 times y, 2 times z, equals negative 3. And if I solve for w, put the free variables on the other side of the equation, I get w is negative, y, negative 3y, negative 2z, minus 3. If I do that for both equations, I get these two equations. And then for the free variables, I just add y equals y and z equals z, things that are trivially true. And again, I can now translate this into the description of an affine space, the description of an offset span. I take the constants, negative 3, 2, no constants here, to give me negative 3, negative 2, 0, 0. That's my offset. I take the coefficients of y. So negative 3 is there, 1 is there, 1 is there, and there are no y's here. So that's a 0. And then I take the coefficients of z. Negative 2 is there, 1 is there, no z's here. So it's a 0 here, and 1 there. And this now tells me what the affine space is. The affine space is this offset plus all multiples of this variable plus all multiples of this variable. I can also think of this as the offset plus the span of these two things. And this is, that's what this is. This is a linear combination. Y and Z are free variables. I get any multiple of this vector plus any multiple of that vector. That's what a span is in fact defined to be. One more example. Here's another matrix. Looks pretty good. X equals negative 3, Y equals negative 2, Z equals 8. But here, this is a problem. Because now I have a leading one in this last row. And this last row says that 0 X's plus 0 Y's plus 0 Z's, which is 0, is equal to 1. This is a row that translates to 0 equals 1. So this is the kind of case where we have no solution. So even though it looks like we're setting our variables nicely, as soon as we have one row that does this, we immediately have no solutions added.